Hey guys, let me know if you, if there's any kind of issues with the connection because um, I want to make sure that we're coming at you loud and clear. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Um, so today's guest is Johnny Young Bosch. You may know Johnny as the voice of a million anime projects. He was one of the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He's also um, starred in shows uh, like the anime Bleach as well as Code Geass. Um, and Yokai Watch, uh, he played Nate uh, for the first two seasons of Yokai Watch. Um, we're going to get all into his career, um, starting in anime, and we're going to get to to learn all about Johnny. So I'm going to go ahead and add him to this link. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that if you have questions, thanks for the request, Johnny. If you have any questions, there's a little at the bottom of the screen, a question mark. So feel free to type your questions for Johnny in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Here we go. Hey, how's it going? I know. Do you know how I mentioned yeah, so that? Like, close. So how close. do I have to get away from this thing? I know. <laughs> they... <laughs> I know. Oh, it, it even dimmed it down even more, didn't it? Hey, a little right, mood lighting, right. perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I think I can make it brighter. Maybe. I don't know. I think it kind of goes with your image. Does it? <laughs> oh, maybe I can't. It's so good to see you. Good to see you, too. I mean, it's been a couple of years, I think. It has been a while, yeah. I don't think uh, I've seen you since Yokai Watch. Not in real life, anyways. Is that a little brighter? It's a little brighter. Yeah, that looks nice. There we go. That, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, yeah, you can hear me all right? Because I'm just, it's on my phone, so I don't know. Yeah, we can hear you great. Okay. I know. Um, it's weird that they don't allow you to go live through your computer. You would think that that would just be easier for everybody, but yeah, yeah. here we are. Instagram. Exactly. It's so good to see you. Um, yeah, a lot of people tuning in probably for the first time. Um, I know a lot of people are familiar with your work, especially people um, that are fans of your work that are tuning in from your timeline. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys have questions, feel free to type them in the box, like way at the bottom with a question mark. Um, and if anybody, if if you know you have like a diehard Johnny fan that can't miss this interview, go ahead and hit the airplane um, icon at the bottom and you can send them this and invite them to join. Is that what a lot that of people, does? Yeah, that's what oh, that that's... does. Oh. I'm, it's like my eighth or ninth episode. I'm learning stuff every, every time. Awesome. So, um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people joining in. Um, so how, how's life in uh, lockdown? <laughs> you know, it's it's good right now. I would say a lot of it is the mental game of lockdown. I think, and <clears throat> you know, uh, of course, the first few weeks initially are are so challenging. Um, but it's all a matter of perspective. I think um, we're doing okay. I mean, cool. lost my grandma early on, but that's that's um, sad. Gosh, pretty sad but, to COVID. Uh, uh, unknown. Oh, uh, unknown. She was ninety three, and she was in a mm. nursing home. So, oh. um, but yeah, how are you handling lockdown? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, I I spent my time, most of my time, uh, learning some visual effects stuff and After Effects and you know a few other things like that for a short film that I did, and so yeah. I've used my time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was wondering that. So for anybody that doesn't know, Johnny just, let's see, directed, starred in, produced, did visual effects for this amazing sci-fi indie short called Art Exodus. And um, I just watched it last night and it was awesome. <laughs> cool. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. So I was, I was curious, how long did it take you to learn how to do all those visual effects? Uh, COVID lockdown, basically. So I spent, uh, well, let's see, we started uh, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah, that just up until, you know, I think it was, I don't know, maybe five months, I think. Oh my gosh. Something like that. Five, six months. How long has it been? It feels like it's Which, been forever. In the big I'm, I'm not keeping it's track pretty of amazing. It. <laughs> um, I think it's been like eight months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, so I, yeah. I spent all my time just kind of figuring that stuff out. Um, I didn't want to do it. I, I, I had uh, I had someone else in mind to do it, um, but then because of COVID, um, 
I, he was moving and things were, you know, just didn't work out. Yeah. So what, what sparked the idea for that movie? Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, originally we were doing, uh, we were sp supposed to do a feature film. Um, <clears throat> it's a long story. I have to give you a short version of it, but uh, we were supposed to do a feature film. Um, but then, you know, and I had a partner that was helping out with it. Uh, I was, we were both, I, I was paying for half the budget. He was paying for half the budget, but a week out, it kind of fell apart. And, you know, so he was no longer a part of it and that part of the money left, but I was already locked in. Um, and, and we were shooting in Texas because that's where he lives and all the crew and people that he knew. So I didn't know anybody. So I had to fly out there and then, you know, try to either get my money back or, you know, figure out what to do. And, you know, within that week of trying to figure things out, I just decided, why not just shoot a short and uh, just make something up. So kind of threw together a story, hit up some friends to help me out. And, you know, Kyle Higgins kind of took over writing duties and, and made it a solid story and uh, just kind of leaned into it, you know? Um, and every day we we're like, after shooting, wow. we, we ran to Home Depot to try to figure out what things we needed for the next day. Um, so it was full days of work for me and uh, a couple of the other guys that were with me, but uh, it, it was, it was, it was a good experience now at the time it was terrible, but you know, just because it was like so much stress and then, then it was like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta act now. Oh, I gotta make sure this, you know, so there's, there's a lot going on, oh, yeah. um, but it, it's, it's satisfying to finish it at this point, you know, and mm -hmm. then with all of that, you know, having, to go through, you know, going from a feature film, completely different film, completely different story and script, and then tr locked into whatever locations and stuff that I had for that film, and then trying to write a story around the locations I have for people flying in at certain dates, you know, that were going to play characters in the other film, but now they're playing totally different characters now. Um, fortunately, a lot of people, the people that were there and people flying in, actors were like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, it's uh, coming out anyway. So <laughs> we basically were just shooting whatever we could think up been had or could get and well, when what month were you shooting we uh january to february january 6th i flew in oh, just right before yeah yeah wow. just exactly it's like right before and as soon wow. as i came back i think i did like maybe one con or something like that or i went somewhere yeah. um hawaii yeah it was hawaii and then i came back and it was like no more no more going, not going anywhere yeah um that's that is amazing. When I, what about all the fight sequences? It seemed like there was just so much choreography in there. Were those part of the feature or did you just? No, I, not, I mean, that was all, I mean, there was action in the other film, but yeah. we, we didn't shoot anything, you know? So like I had, I had stuff blocked out in my head, but I wasn't the only one doing action. And I wasn't the lead in the other film. Uh, my, my friend was the lead, you know? And so I was just, you know, one of the other characters. Was uh, that Jason Narvi or? Narvi was in it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not going to mention any other names because I, I don't want it to seem like I don't want to make a big deal of it. It's, it is what it is. You know, so stuff falls apart all the time. Um, and yeah, so no, it you know, it's just I, I could have actually most people during this was like in crit like when I was I was in, uh, I was in Denver uh, for like Christmas holiday, whatever. And uh, th this was all going down. And I was like, Oh, no, I don't know what I'm going to do. So it was pretty stressful. It wasn't a great holiday season for me at all um but uh, whatever it doesn't matter i mean it worked yeah. out I, you know i mean especially else. not without even knowing that i thought it was a good movie but when you factor in uh, what you guys were able to accomplish in such a short period of time i mean that's truly amazing i had, I had a lot of good people around me so <laughs> is um so i know your uh promo code was good through sunday can people mm -hmm. still see the movie no i mean <laughs> Unless you want to come up with a password, I'll let your uh, people see it for a couple of what days. What do you think? Has anyone not seen it? Do you want <laughs> a little... You guys have not seen the film. Uh, we'll let Allison come up yes. with a password. Okay, you guys uh, send me a DM and let me know if you want a passcode and we'll think something up so you can watch it. It's definitely worth a watch. And you've hidden some like Easter eggs in there too, right? They're, they're they're, yeah, there are about 13 Easter eggs. Um, and it, you know, it ranges from some anime stuff to my band stuff to, you know, Power Rangers and whatnot. So it's kind of, there's not, it's not a whole lot. It's like 13 of them. That's cool. That's cool. Um, it's, and it's, then are you, trying to, are you trying to do festivals? It's, it's just hidden in the, uh, somewhere in the scene. Oh, really? <laughs> you got to search for it though, but it's there. When you see it, when you find stuff like that, then it's like, oh, yeah, I see it. 
a lot of people saying they've found yeah, eight. People are finding <laughs> people are finding stuff. Yeah, yeah, they found quite a few actually. Nice, <clears throat> awesome. Um, so, are we? Are you going to try and do festivals? Are you? Are yeah, you uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm not like just re putting it out there. Yeah. Um, I want people to be able to see it for free. Um, so that's why I did a couple of little screenings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I also needed to adjust some stuff. I had, I had a personal deadline for Halloween. So I wanted to get it out by then, you know, and I, so it wasn't yeah. completely done. So I released it though for the, for a couple of days and then, you know, shut it down. Then I fixed a couple of things that I wanted to fix and then put it back up, you know, um, but I'm not putting it out there until I go through a couple of festivals and really get ripped apart. And <laughs> then I'll, then I'll release it, you know, from, for, from there. Well, keep us posted. Let us know how we can help support. I mean, any kind of endeavor like that is a big undertaking. So, yeah, well, well no, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people commenting, Power Rangers. Can we start at the very beginning? Because I feel like you have such has, an has, interesting oh, like, story. Just uh, like how I started? Yes. <laughs> like ba basically, you Well, know, my mom's Korean. My dad <laughs> is an American. And he was stationed in South Korea, and that's where they met. Uh huh. That's your too dad far. Was, your dad was in the military. Yeah, he was. He was. What more? What what branch? He was army. Army. Yeah. So that's how you know all your hand to hand combat stuff. N no. Mm -mm. No influence. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I I studied martial arts, you know, since I was a little kid, um, and so just kind of, and then you know, I just continued from there. Just, I mean, even even to this day, I still train. So. Did your parents encourage you, or was that just something you wanted to do? Uh, as to act, you mean? Martial, martial arts. arts. Martial arts. Um, you know, I got beat up a lot. I got picked on a lot and beat up a lot. Um, and wow. so, like, I had to move from one school to another school because of the fights I was getting into. And it wasn't anything I was starting. I was just, like, a small kid, somebody that anyone and shy and so quiet and so you know, easy target you know, for bullies. And so went through a bit of that. And then, you know, I, I was trying to do martial arts when I was younger, you know, but it wasn't a, you know, a small kid. And yeah. so, uh, you know, I, yeah, I asked my dad if I can go, you know, train. And he was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, he, he let me do it. And that's, that's kind of where my confidence came from is being in an actual school, you know, and, and training. But I, I will say that like, as I was learning, like when I was younger, high school stuff, I was still kind of a punk. Um, I yeah. got into a lot of fights, um, even after I'd learned martial arts. I kind of, there was a, there's a weird time of me wanting to retaliate, you know? And at that mm -hmm. point, knowing that I could fight, you know, it wasn't, it, it took a while for me to kind of realize how stupid it was. Um, there's, I got into fights on the soccer field, and uh, I was kind of really super confident when I was getting into fights, because I, 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 I don't know, I was just faster, you know, and I could see, you know, a punch coming in or whatever. And so I can, I, I would make fun of people in the fight. But I did this a couple times on the soccer field. And one time it was, it was really bad. It was a big fight. And I got thrown out of the game. And then I realized it, I don't know why, but I realized how stupid it was you know yeah. as I was walking home because my dad had dropped me off at the game I was walking home because I was just like mad and I just realized how stupid it was you know and then I turned around and came back to the game and once the game was over I apologized to everyone you know and I was like this is stupid I don't know why why I did that um, wow. and there, there's a couple moments in my life that were like that that went on the soccer field and one time when my brother and my dad were arguing and I almost got into a fight with my dad and then my dad was you know he, he, it was, I don't want to talk about it too much, but you know, it was, it was really hard for him to, he, he told me he was afraid of me and, and it, it hit me so hard that it, it kind of broke my heart, you know, How that I you? become a punk, you know, I became yeah. the bullies that were picking on me. And so a couple of those moments in that one for sure, then, you know, I changed, I had to change. I think, you know, we all have those moments where we come to the realization that things are not working yeah you know so how old do you think you were when when you were starting to see that 16 17 17 maybe yeah that's 17. amazing some people <laughs> never have that realization <laughs> <Wow. you know>? <laughs> so <laughs> so okay so you are finding your way 
incredibly gifted at martial arts. And then how does the opportunity for to audition for Power Rangers come about? Okay, so I grew up in Texas. I grew mm -hmm. up in Garland, Texas. It's like a suburb of Dallas. And uh, I always wanted to be like an action star. You know, I grew up watching Jackie Chan and a bunch of, you know, Kung Fu theater. And so that's and Bruce Lee and whatnot. So I, I, that's what I wanted to do. Um, but being in Texas, there wasn't any of that, you know. So yeah, yeah. me and my friends, we would just get together and we would shoot a bunch of dumb action films on our own, you know, just ridiculous things. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. It's what I wanted. It was like, man, I really just, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, while I was training at this uh, Kung Fu school that I was at, my instructor was going through the paper and he saw this article that said that they were auditioning for Power Rangers. Um, and In did, Texas? Yeah, well, it was, it was a nationwide search. It was like a cattle call. So it was kind of wow. like- Wow. You know, it's like American Idol, where they do it all over the place. You right? were a pretty cute kid. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. At the time, that I was helped. a cute kid. And, and, uh, and so I had gone down to the audition. There were a ton of people auditioning. I don't know the exact Garland number. represent. Garland represent. There's, there's, uh, there's quite a few people, thousands of people there. Um, and, uh, Hundreds, yeah. if not thousands. Yeah, it was definitely a thousand people, at okay. least. There were probably <laughs> more than that, but. I didn't count. I was so nervous. I was just like, what am I here? What do I do? I've never auditioned before. And so I, my instructor helped me come up with like a martial arts thing, kicking and flipping and whatnot. And so I went there because in the paper, it actually said you had to be a dancer, a martial artist or a gymnast. Um, and I could do martial arts and I could flip. And so that's what I went there prepared to do. I did a bit of that. And then they gave us a monologue and did a bit of that monologue. And long story short, after a couple of weeks, you know, I, I was called out to California to audition again. And that's when I booked uh, Adam the Black Ranger. And then, you know, that was, I stayed out here in California. <laughs> and you so. came in on season two? Yeah. Uh, so what, yeah. what happened to season one? <laughs> well, I wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, I've heard stories of what happened, but I wasn't there. So it's maybe not really fair for me to say because I, I you. came in. They needed, the point is they needed a new Black Ranger. There, yeah, three of us. There were, there were three that, that, well, I mean, you could say they left the show or they were kicked there. They, you know, I don't know what you could say, but they were no longer on the show. And so we, they looked for three other people. We didn't know that we were replacing anyone. We thought, All right, we're just going to be new Rangers. You know, who knows? Right. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, yeah, but we found out. <laughs> that day one, we found out once we showed up. It's like, oh, that's not the same actor. That's the back of somebody else's head you're looking at. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had stand-ins for them. Yeah. But what a what a game changer! I mean, what did that feel like? How old were you at the time? I was um, eighteen. Wow, about eighteen at the time. Yeah, so it was mm -hmm. pretty quick. And uh, from right out of high school, you know, I registered for college. You know, I was going to I was going to study film, and then uh, you know, then I got the call to come out to California. So that's amazing. Yeah, it was pretty oh, cool. You must have been <laughs> so excited. What a I dream. Was. But it was so it was so weird, you know. It was like this stuff doesn't happen, you know. Even my friends were saying, stuff like this doesn't happen to people like us, you know. When I was going to the audition, they were they were like, you know, they weren't saying it in a bad way. They were just like, don't waste your time with that kind of thing, you know. Um, so they're really just looking out for me. But uh, you know, I was just, I just really wanted, I just wanted yeah. it, you know. And so I had to try it. And had you been taking acting classes or was <laughs> no no I had no idea what I was doing. Well, I mean the for me luckily i was yeah. they they wrote my character around me at the time so very shy quiet kid um and that does martial arts and that's basically who my character was so yeah. you'd have the other rangers in the foreground and then there'd be you know me in the background over here like what do we know like, oh right yeah so yeah good fun wow i mean at times were you feeling like um shit what you know, what is, what is going on? Like, were you ever feeling like insecure or? Um, All the time. Yeah. Absolutely insecure. I didn't know anything about acting. I was just like, you know, thankfully I didn't have a whole lot of lines, but then eventually <laughs> they started to give me lines. Um, and, uh, you know, I just kind of uh, little by little figured it out. It wasn't, it was really towards the end. And then really once I got into voiceover stuff that I really it's really after Power Rangers when it really kind of focused on acting. Yeah. And we did go through acting classes and stuff like that while we were on the show. But the sh show, I mean, it's a kid's show, you know, so. <laughs> was, um, so did you move out here by yourself? Did you bring any friends or family? No, I came out by myself. 
um, right. and uh, which was also very scary because I'd never been away from my family. And you're 18, um, you know. 18, you know, I had. And it was uh, a different time, you know, just stuff time. that would happen back then. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was cool though. I mean, I was excited about it. Um, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. There, there are a lot of ups and downs, of course, but yeah, good. Yeah. Oh wow, it's so amazing. Um, a lot of people uh, chiming in about Ichigo Kurosaki from Blue. Yeah. Wanting to hear the voice. Um, how do you feel? Basically, about kind of sounds like this. Um, <laughs> They're, they're they're wanting a bankai, I guess, or something. Bankai, a lot of bankai. Bankai, all right. Bankai. I can't do too much of that. Did you wake <laughs> your kids, kids up? Kids are going to sleep soon. Yeah. Were you um familiar with the with the property when you auditioned for that? I I'm not a not real familiar with it, but mm -hmm. I I knew kind of of the show because my drummer at the time watched a ton of anime and that was one of the ones he was watching and so whenever i would show up to practice he'd be on his computer watching bleach you know and i would you know watch it a little bit over his shoulder he'd watch that. it in japanese yeah subtitles. okay was he just it was subtitles okay yeah um are we gonna see any little ones running <laughs> i don't know i thought i heard my door open up <laughs> so possibly um so what was so what was the audition for that like Okay, so the audition for Bleach. Um, okay, so uh, there was a studio um, at the time that Studiopolis, w they were they were working on Naruto, and um, mm -hmm. which and, you're also in, right? But but this was before I was on that. Like I'd done okay. a couple things, and then a, a couple other friends of mine were like, "Hey, they're they're doing Naruto over at Studiopolis. You know, you should try to get in. And there's a plenty of male characters. Maybe you can get in there." And so. I just kind of called them up and I was like, hey, uh, am I allowed to come in and audition? They're like, sure, come on in, which, you know, they don't do <laughs> usually. But at that time, they kind of were fine, I guess. So I went in and they had a couple tables, you know, they had the female characters on one and male characters, characters on the other. And they're like, or right, choose whichever one you want to try to audition for. And I just kind of grabbed everything off the table. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just went in and I was going through each of the characters. Um, sorry, this is Naruto stuff. So I'm going through each of the characters on Naruto, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the person who was directing engineering at the same time was like, wow, this is great. Every single one that I did. So this is wonderful. This is amazing. This is great. You're doing a good job. It's like, wow, it sounds just like the character. And I, so I walked away after doing like 20 characters or whatever it was. Um, I felt good. Like I was like, yeah. man, maybe I'll get one of these. And I didn't get a single one of those. <laughs> I didn't get any of those characters at all. Um, but because I was there at some point, I don't, I, I assume because I was there after a few, maybe months, I got a call to come in and audition for Bleach. And when I went in for that, then I had kind of known because of my drummer, uh, Ichigo was the, the main character. So I knew he was the most important if I was going to audition for, yeah. so, for me at the time. So it was like, okay, so this one I really got to do good on. And then I grabbed a couple other characters and then I went in. Um, and so, Thankfully, because I had seen some of it from my drummer, like I kind of knew what the character sounded like. I knew a little bit of what was going on. Not totally, but I kind of heard a little. The essence. Exactly. So, yeah. so I was able to really kind of lean into the Ichigo character a bit. But at that time, they were like, well, don't make him so angsty. Let's make him a little friendlier, mm -hmm. um, you know. And so I did it. I did it kind of friendly, but it didn't feel right to me. I was like, okay, I'll make him friendlier. I'll pitch him up <laughs> a little bit or whatever. And then... uh I left, but then I got a call back and the callback was like, okay, so don't do any of the friendly stuff. Just kind of keep them a little gruff, you know, and, and then just kind of keep doing the bonkai screams and stuff that you, the way you did it before. And so I did that. So after that second callback, I ended up booking the role. So. Wow. Yeah. That's a and long story. I guess I, how yeah, I got to figure out a better way to tell it. <laughs> no, I asked. Um, how long had you been in LA at that point? Um, I'd been in LA for quite a while. Um, I don't know. Well, I came to LA in 94. Okay. And um, I'm not sure when that was. That had to be around 2000 something, I think. You know, I don't really, I don't remember. So, okay. So I guess then the missing piece is Power Rangers. You yes. Did multiple seasons of that. There's yeah. a lot um, in that world. Are you trying um, to connect me into getting into voiceover? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so after Power Rangers, there? like towards the end of Power Rangers, you know, um, 
we uh, this the action stunt team Alpha Stunts, the Japanese stunt team, great great action team. Uh, they wanted to shoot their own action film, and so they had they got this Japanese camera and, uh, and they asked me to play the lead, and so that was my favorite thing was to work with these guys and just be around them and hang out and then do some action. That was my favorite thing. So I was absolutely in for that. So I did, I, I was in this little film that they did um, called extreme heist or wicked game, depending on where you are in the world. But mm -hmm. uh, so I worked on that and uh, the sound guys, their equipment wasn't Japanese. This is how it was explained to me. So I really don't know. And so for some reason, the audio didn't work. So whatever they recorded on the day just didn't work whenever they edited, edited mm -hmm. the film. And so I had to go in and dub myself. And as I was oh, dubbing yeah. myself, the producer walked in, heard my voice, and he said, hey, you got a good hero voice. Um, and he said it a couple times. And then after the session, he was like, hey, you want to come audition for this animation I'm doing? Um, and again, this was after Power Rangers. So I was like up for anything, right? Yeah, so like, yeah of course. You know, it's, it's more work. And so I went in and auditioned for this show. And uh, they showed me um, an English track. And they showed me a, the Japanese track and they said, okay, so this is, I, I think it was a, a scratch, scratch track. Um, um, cause it, it was very deep, uh, whereas the other one wasn't. And so they said, can you do something more like the Japanese? And I auditioned, I said, sure. I auditioned for that and ended up booking Trigun. So I booked Vash and Trigun. And that was really the first, other than, you know, doing some ADR and Power Rangers, first voiceover thing for me. That's, wow. that's what opened the door for me. Because then from there, it was like somebody was like, hey, we heard you in this, or maybe I worked with a director here, and then they mentioned me to another director here. And so I was able to get auditions here and there without an agent, not knowing, yeah. fumbling through, you know, and just the right place at the right time. Anime was on this, the client is like starting to be discovered by people. And so I was like right there at the right time when things were kind of taken off as far as anime. That's so cool. Yeah, it's like hanging on. <laughs> yeah, you're like, here I am. <laughs> um, so for anybody that's just tuning in, this, this show is called Alice in Wonderland, and we usually do it every Wednesday at 6 p.m. where we interview people that work in animation and video games. And next week... And it's week, all my fault. <laughs> this guy can't do Wednesday. I, I can't do anything on this. No, time. it actually worked out good. I was, um, I'm going to be interviewing Der Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron, um, oh. Next Monday, and she was going to be Wednesday, but I'm taking next Wednesday off for Thanksgiving. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be a bit of a wacky couple weeks. But if you guys like the show, feel free to follow me. We upload every week, um, so check it out. Um, so ridiculous. The, your hair looks great. <laughs> I, I haven't done it. I've been cutting it myself, <laughs> you know, during COVID. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. That's pretty terrible. <laughs> you watching a lot of YouTube. I always see my husband. I'm like, what are you doing in there? He's like, I'm watching a YouTube tutorial and cutting my hair. Cutting it? Really? No, I yeah. haven't. I should do that. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, really any weird. style you want, you can pretty much find it on YouTube. You can find anything. Um, so yeah. sorry, guys. Um, questions were actually turned off at the top of this. I don't know how that happened, but they're on now. So if you guys want to enter questions in the question box. Hey, I see Polo ahead. in there. <laughs> Try and get to them. Polo. Hey, Polo. Hey. Um, Johnny, a lot of people mentioning cockroach. I it's like a joke I don't get. Is can you enlighten me with um, the cockroach? My guess oh. is it's the line from Arc Exodus. Oh really? I have to see what they said, but I'm not I'm not cockroach having babies. Hmm? A cockroach having babies. Then it could I be just like somebody's cockroach is having babies. I don't know that, where is it one crawling on the back you know? somewhere? <laughs> Like I only really I can only get like little snippets at the bottom because um so yeah so um guys if, if you have questions oh my gosh already five questions um go ahead and type them in the question box um let me see what questions I have so you're talking about your drummer was that um your drummer for eyeshine yeah okay and, and Polo so, who's on here is my guitarist oh no way from eyeshine, awesome. but he's also where giants fall it's basically me and Polo in our uh, new band project what new band project? Tell us. Where Giants Fall. What is it called? Yeah. Where Giants Fall. Can I, Where Giants I, can fall. I can put it in the comments. Where hey. Giants Fall. That's yeah. awesome. Boom. Um, yeah. So where can we hear some of your new music? Is anything out yet? No. Yeah, actually, we do have... Uh, we have two songs on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you type in Where Giants Fall band 
Awesome. And then, uh, yeah, we have a couple songs. We have another one coming. You know, some of you guys have been uh, pushing me to get this other one done. The one that we, we, we did another song in the end of Ark Exodus. And so I added another uh, verse to it. And Polo's already shot his part of the music video. I got to shoot my part and throw that together. And then we're going to just put it up there and then hopefully uh, jam out the rest of our album at some point. That's so rad. Well, definitely keep us posted. I, I'm happy to share with everybody. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely post when it's done. Um, let me see if I can get to some, check out, um, um, can you do a quick, you and the Rokami voice? It, it's really hard because he doesn't have like, um, I mean, there's like, it, half of my characters, they shout. So even just being like, he's a Nagi. It's like, oh, that sounds like that other character, but saying a different thing in Japanese. <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't have a line that I could think of that, you know, yeah, like, I don't have like I, I have a handful of go to lines for stuff like that, but it's all they're all shouting. Yeah, just catchphrases or whatnot, you know. Right, as opposed to like pause up, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like whatever thing we have to say five right. times in a row to get us like to get the voice imprint perfect. Yeah, yeah. My um, name is Nate Adams. You know, <laughs> like I would have you do that too. Then I always do. I the totally do that. And I was I interviewed yes. Rick Zeke. He was on Space Racers with us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Rick does it too. I, and he, it sounds like he does it obsessively. So <laughs> I, I think we all do that. I think we all have like, there's either a line that sticks with us that the character said, or yeah. it's the character introducing it himself or herself at the first time. And then that kind of sticks, at least for me, that's, that's how it is. Yeah. Because one of the hardest things I think with voice acting is to keep that consistency of the character over time. Yeah. You know, you find something that's really cool, but then you, oh, wait, now I suddenly sound five years older, or, you know? Exactly. Uh, what's been your favorite, do you have a favorite role? I know it's kind of like choosing your, your favorite child, but. Yeah, that's hard. No, it's hard for me to choose one. I don't, I don't have one. I really don't. Um, Vash is one. I mean, I, I go through and I list like a ton of them. Ichigo is another one. Lelouch is another one. Lelouch. Um, Can you, you know, do the Lelouch I, voice? Uh, <laughs> I Lelouch from commands you to dance. That's not really the line. He, he says die, but I, I feel weird telling people to die. It's just not, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> I guess I should say live, because that's, that's also a line. <laughs> Your worst experience with a fan? You were, somebody asked you that? Mm. Yeah, somebody did ask me that. Um, you share? <laughs> I have to think about it. Uh, You've been to so many conventions. Um, over I've been to years. A, uh, quite I mean, a few. You must have yeah. some real, I mean, some good creeper. Um, I don't have. Bad, you know, I have not. I've been fortunate enough. I think, I don't know. I feel like my, the people that come to my table are pretty cool. Like they're, they're chill. Like I feel, you know, like there's nothing really like I've never had like somebody, well, one time I had somebody follow me to my, not just one, just like a group of girls followed me to my hotel room um, without me knowing. It wasn't like, I was like, come on. It was like, da -da -da. and then I heard like giggling and then running down the halls and all of a sudden I'm hearing knocks on my door and I'm like, oh boy. That was the only thing I could think of. But there's, that was many years ago. Um, I don't, I don't really, that doesn't really happen. And they were young too. So they were like, you know, there's like a character that, maybe I did and that they were like that's the guy that does you know so whatever I get it but I don't think I've had like a really bad experience you know maybe people I've been fortunate. know your they know your martial arts ability and they just don't want to ask with you <laughs> I don't know maybe right. maybe some people know that but I don't know I think they're there's, like, there's... Yuri low and <laughs> yeah I don't know yeah Johnny uh, Wu no. good no actually I think Yuri can actually I think he might have studied something before oh really I think so <laughs> I think so. I could be wrong, but I think so. There was actually, I remember a time, this was, okay, here's one that might be kind of a bad fan experience. Yeah. Okay. And, and, it, and it, it, it kind of involves Yuri. So I was, uh, I don't know where I was, but I remember someone had, had called me up and they're like, hey man, are you guys okay? You and Yuri? I was like, what are you talking about? And then uh, it was like, yeah, we just read this thing online that you guys got into a big old fight. I was like, <laughs> I didn't get in a fight with Yuri. What are you talking about? And they sent me this link. And there's a guy on some blog that was like telling this story 
that uh, Yuri and I were in the booth working on some video game. You know what it's like in a video game. You know, you're not really there with a bunch of other people. You know, yeah, you're usually you're there right. by yourself, at least in these kind of, this kind of, this show, it was like a, I want to say it was Tales or something like that. Um, and so the story was, was that I was delivering a line and, and uh, like, you Yuri maybe said something or somebody had tried to director try to correct me or on it or something and then I was like do you know who I am I'm John Young Bosch and then <laughs> and then I tried to start a fight with Yuri and then Yuri like took one swing and knocked me out and that was the story and that was in this blog and uh like that was sent to me and I'm reading it and I'm like oh my gosh what somebody's just making up a story like uh, this uh, and then it's published by Yuri Lover 595 <laughs> <laughs> right by your no but then and then as i was reading the comments people were like oh i knew it i knew he had to be a bad person i, I can't stand it. that's terrible when you hear about you and i'm like dude that's not it's not a true story um so so i was kind of like i can't believe this you know and uh i don't know if you know greg Ayers, but greg Ayers and a couple other people that i knew like i have some connections of people that are kind of hackers and so they were able to hack and track this person down and I, I ended up contacting and confronting this person. Oh and my God. Uh, this person eventually told me, oh, I've got a multiple personality. That was my personality named Lucif that was doing that. Ooh. And then they were like, oh, but I'm actually a huge fan of you in Trigun. I think it Lucif was. Lucif, though, hates you. No, no, yeah, Lucif doesn't like me. Um, well, that, it must be Lucifer, I guess. Know, is it short for Lucifer? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Wow. But uh, yeah, so anyways, that, that there's, there you go. There's a bad fan. And that's, I told Yuri about this. That's too. intense. It was pretty funny. Yeah. That's intense. Wow. Yeah. Yep. A, lot of, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people hating on you for that. I guess um, so. Well, I guess I just shouldn't tell Yuri anything. You know, I shouldn't stand up. <clears throat> you know who I am? Yuri, I knock you out. I, sh I wish I could find that, actually. Not actually, I don't <laughs> wish I could find it, but it'd be interesting to read again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so when people ask a question, they pop up bigger? Um, like when, I, yes. Um, so that's one way we can do it is if I go to the questions here. Okay. Um, oh, so it's all on your end then, how that works. Yes, I think okay. so. I think it's all on my end. Um, a lot of people asking about your new music. Are you going to make new music? We kind of already talked about the new band. Um, from the giants, we have talked music. I'm sorry. Fall from giants. Sorry, what is it? Where giants fall? Where giants fall? Yeah. yeah. Um. What? What about? Um. Because I know you taught yourself how to play guitar and sing. Mm -hmm. At what point? Um. Did you start pursuing music? Oh, that's a good question. Um. I started pursuing music in 1998. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, um, I had um, I had a guitar. So a buddy of mine in Texas, he, you know, he started playing the guitar when I'd left to work on the show Power Rangers. And then I would come back every so often and see that he became this amazing guitarist. And I thought, dang, that's really cool, you know. Yeah. And so I had bought a guitar that I was going to like learn how to play at some point, but I never did. Um, and it was just sitting in my, um, my closet and whatnot. And so after Power Rangers kind of hit like a really kind of, like a low end, like I kind of hit rock bottom. I hit rock bottom. There, I, I don't need to go into too many details, yeah. but I'll say that I was basically homeless. I had a couple trash bags, I had a guitar and a busted cot. Um, and I was living with whoever would let me live with them. Um, you, you would think, oh, but you're off the Power Range. You made a ton of money. No, nah, at that time, Power Range just really didn't pay you that well. Um, but I did okay. I did okay. Yeah. But it was but, gone. I mean, it was all gone. Yeah, well, <laughs> cash, cash infusion, um, being young and like not having, yeah. you know, they don't teach you money management in school. It's, That's it's true. They don't, not, they don't teach any of that, um, which is a shame. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, so that's the way it was. I was kind of, I went through um, a couple years of this kind of depression and I taught myself to play. And uh, yeah, I just started to learn chords and 
I would sing and I would record. Actually, my my dad and my sis, younger sister came out to visit me one time. And then I had written a song. And I was like, hey, so I wrote a song. You want to hear it? And they were like, oh, yeah. Let me. And then I started playing the song and singing. This first time I ever sung in front of anyone. And then I could see their smiles kind of fade like, yeah, right? And I'm like, okay, this is not that good. And I'm like, it's a work in progress. And then I ended up buying like a one of those four track recorders and I would record the song and then I heard myself singing and I was like wow I really can't sing and so I would try it again and I would find out where I was wrong in my pitch and then I, I just kept doing that until I finally figured out kind of how because it's really weird you know like you'll think you're singing it right but you're not hearing it right and so oh, it right. takes a while to train your ear for that sort of thing you know and uh, it's, so. it's so funny like I, I think that it, when I did my DNA test it actually tells you if you are more likely or less likely to hear pitch. So some are you people, serious? yes, it's from a genetic. DNA test. Some people naturally um, hear pitch better. Wow. And some of us have to work a little hard about it, harder at it. I'm like average, but my husband actually has perfect genetically bad at it. So oh, oh, okay. Fun the opposite. Human. So we're probably, yeah, in the middle okay. at least. Some people really pick up pitch very easily. Oh, I know some. Yeah, I know some people. It's like eh, that's a C. Yeah, you know, it's C sharp minor. You know, add nine on there, whatever. Right? And I'm just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Just, um, just put, I just la, put la, it la. <laughs> <laughs> la la. Exactly. Um, feathers is my favorite song. Which one is your favorite, and why? Feathers. Oh, okay. That was off of the last I Shine album. I think that was on the last I Shine album. Um, yeah, that was a that was a good song. I I like that song. That's why I wrote it. Polo has some really good guitar stuff on that one, actually. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of uh, songs. Alone is one that I think I wrote a long time ago that I feel like connected with people the most. And so yeah. anytime we had a set, we would pretty much play that song at some point. You know. Um, Cause it just, it, you know, everybody's felt alone. I feel alone right now, except for the cockroach in the background having babies. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Somebody's talking about that guy. Um, how has um, you know what? What are your insights or anything you've you've learned during this year of seclusion? Oh. What have I learned? I learned a lot of visual effects stuff. I learned how to do some visual effects stuff. stuff. Maybe not great. Okay. You know, I'm okay at it. Um, I'm sure if I continue five years later, I'll be a little better. Um, I don't know. I, I've learned uh, that you just can't believe everything you hear and see. Um, there's a lot of strange and misleading things Things going back and forth. If you look at a, the stuff from the beginning, it's it's a really strange time, you know. Mm. Um, I just know that throughout it, I've had all these other emotions, you know, um, just things you, we all are struggling with, you know, with all of the stuff that's going on. And so, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, there's there's a lot, a lot of us. Uh, it's just a weird time, you know. It is. A I, don't, time. I don't know. It's just a bizarre time. I feel bad for, you know, just the way things, I can't imagine. I, I, th I think back to like, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm able to still kind of work, not yeah. nearly as like probably you, you're able to work at home, right? Yeah. Right, the, the, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I, are you getting a lot? Cause I, I'm getting some work, but it's not, yeah, it's nothing like it was, you know, it's like, I would say it's, you're doing better than I am then. I mean, doing, yeah, it's I less animation for me these days, sadly. Oh, um, yeah. But the commercials seem to be. Oh, that's great. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, going into the studio is always my biggest pleasure. So, actually, I'm going to the studio tomorrow. Um, going physically? Physically to Igloo. Mm -hmm. Um, they have all their COVID protocol and everything. So I feel very grateful because they gave me the option to record at home, but then you're writing the levels, you're engineering, and, yeah. and um, they, they keep everything. Kind of gotten used to it now at this point, <laughs> where my levels are for when I'm shouting, when I'm talking. Doing I stuff. know, right. Kind of got it figured out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember just before it all shut down, I had to go in somewhere and they had told me oh yeah we got you know wipes and we got gloves and it's all cleaned up and whatever 
And I went in and I was like, hey, so where are the uh, wipes at? And like, oh, yeah, we don't have any wipes. And I was like, wait, I don't know if you guys did anything. So, I mean, I was there. So I was like, I'm just, I'm going to finish up the session, but that's really not cool. No. Um, and so, so I've been a little like not sure yet. You know, I don't want to get it. I think I'll be all right. I think I'll manage through it if I ended up getting it, but I just don't want to get it. I've okay. known, I've known, I know a couple people that have gotten it and it's, yeah. it's, it's weird. Like you lose your taste buds for a bit and you kind of, you know, but I don't and know. some people seem to not get them back for a while. I've heard that too. Such a such a gambit, but it's weird. But it'd make it easier to diet. Just, hey, maybe uh, I should get COVID to go on a diet. Guys, <laughs> hey. drop the COVID twenty <laughs> by getting it's COVID. A terrible idea, people. Don't do that. So, Sorry, can so I much, take that back? So much hate right edit now. That out. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll definitely. Don't worry, nobody gets uh, forty five minutes into the replay anyway. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um oh gosh i mean so many questions johnny a lot of people are wondering is bleach coming back what's the do you know anything about that i mean i do know that they were i mean i don't i know that they were doing stuff in japan oh. um, but i also know that they said that they don't know yet about the english about doing it in english so as far as Japanese, that's a, yeah, I think they are gonna do something. Mm -hmm. I, just, I haven't heard mm -hmm. anything so. Well, you guys make sure to tweet how much you want Johnny back. So exactly, <laughs> make it obvious, people, please make it super <laughs> ob. <laughs> um, I'm curious, um, hobbies, things that you do to stay inspired. I mean, obviously, you're just such a creative person working as writer, performer, but also director, visual effects, music. Um, do you have any like lame hobbies or are they all just like that up cool? <laughs> um, Is it, you, martial I, arts, do you, do you like make miniature Santa's villages like my son and I are doing right now? Or no, that sounds awesome. Um, I do you play a, I, my son has like, like he's got all, like my daughter's older now. She's 10. Mm -hmm. She's not that old. My son is five. And so Mine he's, got, yeah, five. Uh, almost till we find January. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> so he's kind of inherited all her old toys, you know. Uh -huh. So he's got like Peppa Pig, but he's also got like monster trucks, yeah. <laughs> and so he, I mean, aside from the other things that I do, you know, I I play Peppa Pig with him, yeah. and I I do random various voices for the different things. But then at some point I get tired, and then I realize, oh man, I took on a very hard voice. I don't think I can carry this through. <laughs> So I have to kill off that character earlier, you know? Yeah. Do you do Daddy Pig? Daddy Pig. Such a yeah, I, I don't know oh what I do Daddy Pig. Daddy Pig. I'm I, like, Gaudry's Daddy Pig. <laughs> um, Did Peppa walk all over you? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I don't really Who recall. Do kinda, pig? For me <laughs> and uh, Peppa Pig, I'm usually, I think I'm usually, George! But I do that. I do like a terrible, like, I don't know. I must have seen this in the eighties, but it's kind of hello, George. You know, my name is George. You know, I, I'm kind of in that weird, That's kind of sweet. scratchy. Weird, and I don't know what, yeah. how you explain it, but Ooh, I do I that like for that most of them. <laughs> most of them have that voice <laughs> with an accent or something. You know. Oh, yeah. Dinosaur. Yeah. Dinosaur. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. But like, he he's a uh, he um. I don't know if you guys have seen the siren head thing. He somehow stumbled upon, do you know what siren head is? I think it's a game. I think it's a game, right? And it's like this weird, creepy horror, like skinny tall, like, uh, you know, Slender Man, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, Florida, so be, I mean, it, it would be kind of like Slender Man, not personally. but it's got like a siren for a head with oh, teeth. Oh, and yeah, And it would be okay. like standing uh, in the trees. Uh -huh. And then, uh, yeah, I just, he was like, whatever i don't know what he was he was on uh roblox it's on roblox okay and okay. and actually some of his minecraft like some like just like a couple guys he watches on on uh youtube that are like uh preston plays is one of he's like a minecraft youtuber or something like that right and so like he's played it and it's had siren head in it but it's like really creepy and scary and uh 
I realized that during lockdown, I actually have to really monitor what he, he gets into. Like I have all the restrictions on it and I thought things are fine. Yeah. But then, you know, then I, he comes out and he starts describing this character that is really tall and he's got big old arms and he's like drawing it. So, you know, like when kids like in movies where they draw like the whatever, I don't know, like the scary, creepy, yeah. whatever thing and there's blood everywhere. He yeah. drew one of those. And I was like, what is this? That's Siren Head. What are these? These are the dead people. And I'm like, what are you oh. watching? <laughs> what did you You're watch? like Googling but, Siren yeah. Head. Yeah, but the one he watched wasn't real. It wasn't all, it wasn't like real dark. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. The ideas were there. Enough yeah, for they get through that to... algorithm, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, there you go. I'm ra raising them right. <laughs> Hey, it's a global pandemic. All bets are off. Is he back at preschool or homeschooling? Yeah, it's all. It's all. Yeah, virtual. He's kinder. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's yeah. challenging. How has it been uh, working from home and having two small children also home? Well, I mean, they're great. I, you know, they yeah. they they do their school stuff on their own. You don't have to force them, and they actually enjoy it. Um, mm -hmm. And as far as me working, you know, I worked, I had a couple sessions today um, and, you know, I had one yesterday. So things are going, you know, yeah. it's not bad. And I've, I've, you know, I had built like a studio when I had my band the first time. So I have a booth and all this stuff. So, and I've had, I've got all microphones and equipment, but really I got all that stuff because of my band. Um, so mm -hmm. fortunately for me, I didn't have to do too much once this thing happened. The only thing I had to get was a uh, source connect. Um, yeah. And I paid for Pro thinking I needed it. And they're like, oh, you don't need that. And they never use it. It's always like, no. please send me a thing. Oh, you didn't even need to buy it. And I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah, I know it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not. It's not cheap. Um, well, we only have a couple minutes left. Sadly, okay. this is like flying by. Um, if you guys like the show, feel free to follow me. And you can um, check out every week we've had. Last week we had um, Emmy-nominated voice actor Rick Z. Um, next week we have Debbie Derryberry, voice of Jimmy Neutron, and um, you can also request certain guests, and I can reach out and try and get them as well. Um, so before uh, before we go, um, Yokai Watch that was fun. Yes, it was fun. Do you remember <laughs> Mark Risley? Have you kept in touch with Mark at all? Yeah, a little bit. Every once in a while, he'll send me. He sent me some very strange video. <laughs> He sent me that one too. That's <laughs> like, one. What are you sending uh, me? The, the one he I don't even know if... the film festival circuit with yes, the... yes. yes. That, one. that one was was very artistic. Um, that's one word for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mark's got a lot of. He, who knows? He might even watch the replay of this. Um, <laughs> a lot of people saying that I actually the, his I bigfoot watched. his bigfoot video stuff was my favorite though. Did you see any of that? The bigfoot video from this was a while ago. Thanks. While we we're on the show, thanks. So. Oh no, I forgot. Like he no. was at like I, if I might be, this is how I remember him explaining. But he was at like a Bigfoot convention or something, or we're gathering, and so he was in a tent, and there's somebody who's dressed up in a giant Bigfoot costume is like part of the thing, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he had filmed it, but at a weird angle out of his tent, and it crossed or whatever, and and uh, he he ended up posting that, and everybody's like, "See, it's Bigfoot, it's real," and he's like. <laughs> Well, he also had that Ghostbusters thing where he like went in. He does like he's like one of those people that like a go, paranormal investigator. Yeah, yeah. Are you serious? Things, I didn't yeah, know that. things that you don't know about Mark Rose. Like he does paranormal investigating. So, so he's got one of those EMF detectors and all that kind of stuff. I think so, and he's got like video proof of ghosts. So no, that's funny. <laughs> I should should hit him up. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of different characters on that show. Yeah, we we were kind of like. You do everything you in the show. Play. Like, what was it? Like five of us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you just take take over all these different voices. Yeah. 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 That was a lot of fun. It was. Um, fun. So, what do you have any projects that are coming out soon that you can tell us about? I mean, I there there are a few things that I'm working on currently that I wish I could talk about. Yeah. It, I mean, there are a couple of them that. You know, I mean, the fans are going to know kind of maybe what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. There's a couple things, you know, that I'm sure that they'll be excited about, but I can't talk about them yet. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, and what about what is next for you? Um, you've just made this movie. Are you going to continue with filmmaking? Are you going to, I mean, you have a new musical project. What yeah, else? Well, we do have an album that I need to finish. Um, uh -huh. A lot of things keep happening and then it keeps kind of getting pushed back a little bit. Um, and so I, I have another short film that I did a while ago with a friend of mine. Um, and it's a little hokey, you know, a little cheesy, but it's kind of fun. So I'm, I'm going to try to finish that up real quick and then, uh, and then really kind of focus on the album. Actually, my kids were writing a song the other day. I write songs with my kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, maybe I can play it, actually. It's not very long. I have it here somewhere. Oh, there it is. You might not like it. <laughs> My kids sing on it, too, so. That's all they have so far. That's they so they wrote cute. it they sang it <laughs> i just i was like well what do you want the beat to be and then they gave me the beat and they're like what's the melody all right and you just kind of do that we we do that every once in a while oh uh, yeah Bodie and i have been doing some songwriting too um nice like more like improvised stuff though at this point <laughs> we have a song we recorded that i want to do a little animation too i'll post that in the next couple of weeks for you guys yeah it's I, so fun I, I, writing with kids it's like it is it is cool when you get cool kids you're like okay yeah like what why do i deserve these wonderful yeah kids? you like doing what i like doing how does that <laughs> exactly how does that work yeah. it probably won't last forever no i know at some point i'm gonna be very annoying by the time i know i keep saying that i'm like my son thinks i'm like really cool right now and i'm like this is not gonna last i know yeah I feel it. Johnny, thank you so thank much. You. This has been great. I mean, I know we've worked together for like six years and I never, you know, I just, it was so cool to get you to know you better tonight doing all the research and, oh, like, yeah. and all the you, you did research? <laughs> you yeah. don't have to do research on me. PDI, <laughs> I, thank God it's the internet because yeah, exactly. yeah, I didn't have to go, you know, but, um, but yeah, it was so great having you down. And thanks for having um, me. Yeah. Let us know okay. how we can help support your movie or any future projects you have. I'm happy to share um, yeah. with the Wonderland crew, both of them. Yeah, just let me know if uh, your people want to watch the film, and I'll make yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, guys, DM. My fans are like going to figure out mine. Basically, it's anything, any show that I've worked on. Any, yeah. you know, like I did. Frog was the first one. Bunkai was okay. my last password. My passwords are all going to be that. So you, you know, you yeah. make whatever you want. Maybe just uh, my name or something. Exactly. Or one. We'll Wonder people actually tune in. Or Wonderland. Yeah. But you get a DM me so we we know that it's the right one. Um, and thanks, guys. I hope that you subscribe to the show and um, tune in next week because we're going to keep going with this. It's the it's all we have right now. <laughs> <laughs> the virtual connections. That's um, right. Okay, thanks, Johnny. We'll have a great rest of your week. Yeah, you too. You have a good Thank night. Bye, guys. Bye.